Okay, welcome everybody to another edition of TW2020, Local to Global here in beautiful Tasmania, Australia, as we're continuing our road to global, starting from the worst possible spot in the game, at least according to Adam, as we're in Tasmania, starting from the bottom, trying to get to the top, as we're now May of 2020, uh, for our, you know, basically our sixth six set of shows as we try to go one show a week in January, saw how much insane money we were losing, and went down to two weeks. But now, you know, we're still um, still trying two shows a week to basically, you know, get to something resembling a non-crazy amount of money losing. But let's see what happens here as we're on our first show of the month. And let's get rolling. Um, so we start out with Blaze Maximum and Rod, uh, Rob Edwards doing a promo, which really means Blaze Maximum doing a promo where Rob, Rob Edwards looks scary. And basically what happens here is Blaze Maximum explains that you know, he's sick and tired of these these two hick redneck cowboys um, screwing up, you know, his plans. So he does what did a smart man do. He found somebody willing to kick some ass for a fee, and that man is Rob Edwards. Edwards basically, you know, does a quick promo where he says, like, you know, you know, yeah, I'm here, you know, sure, Blaze Maximum is a wrestler, and he said I can get roller shows, but at least he pays well. You know, at least he has a job on, like, the list of you geeks. And all those dorks in the back, you know. And then he does some more shadow punching because that's what MMA douche would do. And I was always like, you know, tonight, you know, we're going to show, or today rather, since I'm the sort of, you know, kayfabe here is that we're doing these shows in the afternoon at some like flea market or something. But basically, you know, um, as Blaze goes, you know, today we're going to send these two outback cowboys back to the mainland where they should stay. Uh, so this gets, gets a 27, solid promo. Uh, Blaze Maximum did well, going for him to go off script, and got, got the crowd hotter, and got the crowd off to a strong start. Only 24 people here, which makes sense, even with our increase in size because of the falling economy and wrestling, which, you know, great, great stuff. And if we look at the dirt sheet, yeah. Only thing is, Blaze Maximum has some lower morale, and Edward was penalized for a poor gimmick. So that's unfortunate. Uh, then our in our first match of the evening, it about had a good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Hank Greer defeated Christian Blythe in 8-19 by pinfall the f after using a foreign object. So, you know, Hank Greer's just, you know, uh, you know, so back and forth match. It looks like Blythe is going to win. Greer sneaks some brass knucks or, you know, something like that. And basically is able to, you know, to knock Blythe out, get the pinfall victory in a cheating way because he's a, you know, cocky smarmy heel. Uh, they gets a 31. Uh, Blythe got a 39 because he's actually really solid in the ring. Hank Greer got a 26. Um, so solid match. Um, Hank Greer is inexperienced, poor momentum and consistency. But oh yeah, the other thing is like I was trying to get Greer out of like having the uh, chilly note or cooled or like just cold momentum. So giving one play is a good way to get to that. And then you know Hank Greer celebrates and then he tries to flirt with Siri D at ringside, but you know Siri D basically just kind of ignores him because uh, you know he's still a low level heel. Uh, but you know it looks like Hank Greer. Um, enjoy the freedom to go off script, so at least he like did his like flirting at ringside well. Um, so this gets a 34. Siri Deer also improvised, which means she's hit her disgust well. Um, so it gets a 34. Looking at the dirt sheet, again, poor momentum for Hank Rear, but you know, still solid stuff. Then we go to our next match, which is uh, Flip Buchanan. Oh, and I forgot to turn off Cole as one of the rare agents. Eh, not the end of the world. Anyway, Lance Slot defeated Flip Buchanan in 647 pinfall to Twisting Splash. So this is actually like a you know quick back and forth match, but Lot dominates, and then he gets the one with the twisting splash, even though it's a heel. But you know, Flip Cannon is basically a pure dropper. Uh, this gets a twenty-five, uh, mainly holding back for momentum and some you know road agent work and lack of a storyline. But still, this gets a twenty-five, which is you know good. And then afterwards, he challenges Armando Guerrero to a, a match next week. You know harking back to their match waving Jack in January saying, you know, Armando got lucky back then and you know there are people talking how like Kuro's a better wrestler. But you know, Lance Lot is the standard here in SLW. Uh, ignore the fact like he's been losing. But again, this was just a win to get Lot back to basically like at least neutral momentum and set up some other stuff. Unfortunately the program was terrible because Lance Lot really can't talk. But still nothing too terrible, you know. And then we have a uh, quick uh, quick thing at the beginning, which only got a 15, but still, 
entertaining me. As basically XX was doing a TikTok dance because that's his gimmick. He's a social media influencer when the crowd popped because Hack the Hunter came out. So just as like XX doing TikTok dance, you know, saying, hey, come on, I, I need to get my followers up when um, when Cat comes out, crowd pops because they knew XX is about to die. And that's basically what happens as in a 30 match, uh, Hack the Hunter defeat XS by pinfall in 534 by pinfall the epic side suplex so just like this is just XS maybe gets a little bit of a heat segment in um when like x when like hack you know when he cheats a little but at the end of the day this is just a total squash for hack um so this gets a 30 and then hack throw away x out of the ring then screaming hack to the crowd as they cheer uh gets a 30 and again i forgot to take keith cole off as the road agent but still not the end of the world um but yeah this gets a 30 solid stuff in our next match, uh, Dazzler defeated Bounce Buchanan in 605 by pinfall to Dazzling X-Wing, so this gets a 33. Dazzler gets a 42 because he's actually pretty solid in the ring. Bounce gets a 29 because he sells well. And again, this was just a straight-up squash win for Dazzler as he's had some cool momentum. Um, you know, just, you know, just gets him hopefully back to neutral and rebuilds him a little as a heel because I've basically been using him as, like, the designated jobber in a couple of main events, so this hopefully builds him back much. So this gets 33. And then his, uh, again, I keep on, I forgot to kick call these last couple promo segments that I, oh well, not the end of the world. Actually, let me do this just to show as it shows on here. So let me turn to booking screen. Let me check out this last thing. Yep, okay. So what we can do is change it to Armando and problem solved. But yeah, this gets a 41. It's basically Dazzler saying, you know, in his sort of flamboyant way that Yes, all you haters may hate me, but I am still beautiful and fantastic, and I will be back on top of Southern Lights Wrestling before you know it. And something like that as the crowd boos, but as we continue the show, it's now main event time. And about that, a good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. Lone Rider and the Kipper defeated Rob Edwards and Blaze Maxman in 12 26 when Rob Edwards was disqualified while fighting Lone Rider. So, this is, I imagine, Rob Edwards locking in like a, a blatant chokehold and the referee like trying to tell him to break it. And after, after a five count, the ref calls for the bell. Um, and this leads to the Kipper running in and Blaze out also running in and also leads to our like final ending of the show. Which, but, but before I go there, we have a 40 for the overall match. Uh, Kipper gets a 37, Lone Rider gets a 33. Uh, Blaze Maxman gets a 30, which isn't great, and uh, Rob Edwards gives me a 39, because he's actually a pretty solid guy. Um, yeah, good stuff. And then in the post-match angle, uh, Rob Edwards locks the hold on the Kipper. So basically, like, you know, it, it, the brawl happens, the Lone Rider's trying to, uh, like, you know, get back up. But, uh, you know, he's still a little beaten up, so if there's a 2-1 advantage, Rob Edwards locks in some sort of a hold on the Kipper, and then Blaze Maxim, you know, beats up Lone Rider a little bit before the the few officials they are finally come streaming out and stop things. So they get to 29, which means, yeah, we get a 38, which I think is still our best show so far, which is what we should be doing consistently, and increase our popularity in one region. Um, let me see, have I been making speeches? Yes, okay. So let's give Lance Lott some encouragement. Let's give the Kipper some encouragement. And let's give Rob Edwards. There you go. So we'll just see if anything interesting happened um, uh, as far as uh, as far as like post match stuff, and we'll check our um, we'll, we'll check our momentum, see who still needs to be rebuilt here, and then we'll go on to the next show. Um, so let's see here. Are we going left the business? Okay, who cares? Uh, Christian Blythe changes. Oh, yeah, Clint Christian Blythe changed to technician. Hank Rear, I'm giving you some momentum, be happy. Um, and then if we actually check out our roster, if we look at momentum. Okay. So, okay, Saint Crew is still cold because I have actually probably killed him a bit. Uh, Lance Lott and Lone Rider still need some more pushing, so does Francis Burke. Dazzler uh, needs some pushing out of the cold still. Uh, Chris, I'm okay with uh, my designated job falling in the cold, but like, here we go. Luke Pope's hot, and Kipper, Rob Edwards, Hack, and Mortable are all very warm, which is good. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. 
Um, so if we go back to the main screen, yeah, I think, let me look at my backstage. Yeah, backstage still 100%. There's some people irritated because, like, they need to be win more, but, like, it's not the end of the world. Um, but anyway, um, so I shall be back in a minute with the second show of the month, and then that'll be that. So see you in a, in a second. Okay, now time for the second show of the month of May, as we're back in beautiful Hobart, Australia. We totally are. Ignore the fact it was set on Adelaide before. But we're back in beautiful Hobart, Australia, in Tasmania, for another show, and let's get rolling. So, Black Flash and the Super Surfer dudes basically start the show doing your pretty basic, you know, babyface promo, talking about how, like, they don't care who Mortar will pile will you know bring out as his partners tonight in the big six-man match you know they'll 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 take them on live flash gets you know a little quick promo time surfer juice gets to hang 10 and there you go um not the best promo because these aren't the best promo guys even though they're my top faces but what what can you do uh 33 solid stuff there you go uh then we have lone rider defeating excess in 502 by pinfall the right on this gets a 17 um mainly because neither of these guys are really over uh, but the match did get the crowd hotter, and no matter our 31, excess got a 25, and yes, yeah, it, was, it was basically ding because of lack of storyline, which isn't the end of the world. And then we have a quick dazzler in ring, uh, again, you know, putting himself over, you know, talking about how fabulous and great he is, and how all you pathetic Tasmanian fans don't declare, don't even deserve to see the stylings of a real professional wrestling star. Uh, 40, and I forgot to take Keith Cole as the uh promo guy here that's unfortunate or as a road agent rather but still he got a 40 which is really good and here we go and again i have to note we're down to 23 people but that's because the wrestling in like i'll show this after the show is really down in the dumps but anyway we've got dazzler taking on francis burke and it about had a good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd dazzler defeated francis burke in 928 by pinfall with a handful of tights so you know you're basically even i remember like francis burke going up top for uh cross body block or some sort of like moonsault or something flippy and but dazzler rolls through holds onto the tights and gets the pinfall victory so dazzler gets a 39 francis burke gets a 32 really solid match and after the match so yeah then basically you know dazzler does a quick celebration and then leaves um ooh, ouch this is not a good match at all but also it was quick so this is just another match to put a uh, reggie hammer over so reggie hammer defeated quick mercury morse in 455 by pinfall the hammer jammer just a total squash uh, this just gets hammer over, and again, I forgot to take Keith Cole off as the road agent. Again, I just want to double check that real quick for the rest of my stuff. Uh, yep, okay, let's do a little, little insight into my booking, which is basically don't actually use my road agent as a road agent, even though he's a road agent. I think everything else should be okay, but I'm, I'm just going to check the big stuff. Okay, and let's check the match. And the match here. And the, yep, I know. And the match here. Okay, so that was the last thing where we screwed up. Okay, let's go back. And Reggie celebrating gives a 25, because he's not that over yet, but that's what we were trying to build up. Uh, next match is, um, you know, Lancelot at the last uh, show, Challenge Jr. Miranda Guerrero. So this match was made, and in a bout that had great wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, Lancelot defeated Armando Guerrero in 8.58 by controlling a handful of tights. So again, this is, I imagine, like inside cradle, roll through, roll to tights, gets a pinfall win, Lancelot cheats to win, and now it's even one and one. And yes, this is part of my rebuild Lancelot from the bottom of the momentum charts. Uh, so Lancelot had a 36, Armando had a 38. Again, would have been better with a associated storyline, but still a solid segment rating. So the, this gets a 33. And Lance, of course, because he's not charismatic at all, only gets a 19 for celebrating in an over-the-top way. Uh, then Morgan Pyle comes out and says, you, you gotta understand, I'm the star of the show here. So, Black Flash, Surfer Dudes, you can, you know, you can talk all you want, but at the end of the day, the crowd is here to see Mortable Pile. The man who stirs his drink, the man who was on television in Australia. Don't you understand that? But I've just, you know, t found two men in the back who are almost as good as I am, who will be able to take the fight to me. Then he introduced Jonathan Wesker, 
who as you can see is sort of like a big muscly guy, and Leon May. Uh, so this gives a 33, solid stuff. Um, in the actual main event, in a decent match, Hangtang, Lucas Pope, Jesse Chasman, and Black Flash feed more of a pile, Charles Wesker, and Leon Main. In 1528, when Black Flash pinned more of a pile with a senton bomb. So again, big six-way, you know, sort of end things, but Black Flash gets the big win over a pile by, you know, hitting the senton bomb and getting the win. So this gets a 39. Uh, Wesker was tiring, so he gets a Lugia 15. Main 18, pile 28. Pope gets a 51. Uh, Tasman gets a 31. Black Flash gets a 46. So really solid stuff. So this ends up being a 39. And then the Bayface celebrating at the end of the show gets a 30. So we finished getting a 37. And yeah, so um, Armando, great performance. Uh, who was the other guy who I think actually did pretty decent? Yeah, okay. So then we had Black Flash. You get some great performance. And Hang 10, you get some great performance. Okay, so we'll do some, you know, checking around on everything. Well, once we get the, uh, well, yeah, we can also just push through the end of the month here, see what happens as a result of that, and then go from there. After it does this thing, okay, so some people are leaving the business. Harrison Hash is leaving the business, okay. Uh, Rich Money retained the world title, okay. Um, so we're in, yeah, we're at the last day of May. So I'll just push through to June. We'll check things out and then we'll go from there. And this is just going to take a minute while it goes through. Alrighty, let's just check. Them. Okay, so TCW, Jake Ward defeating Aaron Andrews, 86, Wolf Hawkins in a ladder match, 89. Okay, solid stuff. Um, so, okay, so let's just begin with the basics with us. So we lost, see, this is interesting because if you look at our, okay, so starting with Creative. Creative still has Pope as our number one guy. Edward is actually now our head primary heel. Black Flash and Black Blaze Max are still tops. Um, then we'll check out other stuff as we go along. Uh, so our storylines, our only story that really matters is uh, this one, which is still a 39. Uh, no titles yet, even though we're sort of getting closer to that because we're actually being build people up. Important thing, so our size. So we're up to a five, but which means you know we should be getting more people. But the other problem is if we if we look at the world right now, wrestling industry is at a friggin' nine, not an eight. Not, not a 15, not a 14, but a 9. So that's going to get worse. That's, you know, so if that hopefully maybe will get better. But regardless, uh, going back to this. So this is another thing we have to worry about. Uh, people are, you know, a variety of not great, not happy. But here's the thing. As long as we're getting basically new high things for every show, you know, that's that's what I'll, I'll be continuing to be okay with. Um, but yeah, just to go over our roster. So, Quick Mercury Morris is already up to a five, even though he's on, only all all been losing. Armando's up to a seventeen, which if we look at the uh, progress, so yeah, he's up from a zero up to a seventeen, so that's a solid. Black Flash is let's see here if we look at his popularity history. So he's actually, he started at 28, he went down to 25, but he's back up to a 26. Place maximum is up, let's see here, if he started at 0 or 20, because either way would be good. So he started at 24, he actually dropped down to 18, but I built him up to a 20. Uh, Bounce Buchanan is up to a 9. Siri D is up to a 1, because I haven't really been using her a whole bunch of actual angles. Uh, Christian Blythe is up to an 8. Dazzler's up to a 21, which again, if we look at the actual uh, progress here, so yeah, he this is the highest he's been. 
Uh, Francis Burke is up to a 15, which if we look at things here, if we look at the progress, so yeah, he also started at zero, and this is the highest he's been. Hack is up to a 16, which I know he started from nothing. Lucas Pope is up to a 17, and he's already gained 51s with Jesus Christ. That'll be interesting when he's actually... Like, I'm expecting him to get signed by RAW the moment he gets, like, up to a certain popularity um, number. But yeah, if you look at his numbers, yeah, he's up to a 17 already. Hank Greer is up to a 13. Jesse Tasman is up to a 17. Jonathan Wesker is up to a 15, which, again... Uh, Lance Lott is up to a 17 as well. Uh, Leon Main is at a 13. Loon Riders at a 15, which I wonder if he is. Let's see here. Yeah, so he's also being built up from nothing. He's solid. Mortal Pile is another guy who's like actually dropping a little, which makes sense. Uh, Rob Edwards is up to a 16. So, and again, like, yeah, that's up for nothing. So there you go. Uh, Reggie Hammer, yeah, it's up to a 10. The Kippers, um, I think I've actually been building him up. Let's see here. Yeah, he's actually up to higher than he is in the rest of Australia. Probably because he's kept him strong. And Excess is up to a 9 just from being around. And then if we look at, um, you know, breakdowns, so most of the roster, like because they're like close together, is ma major stars. Stars are basically the lower card guys. Well known stars are our ref and announcer, and un unimportant people who literally is either Siri D or other are. So if we look at momentum, so again, Burke and Greer, I sort of still need to build up, even though like them being at cold momentum isn't the worst thing. Chili, Lan Lancelot, and what Rider also need to be built up. Most of the cold guys, aside from Tasman, are Matizic Jobbers, aside from again Dazzler. But uh, Lucas Pope is still hot. See, this important thing is the sort of people I want to be hot or very warm are that, except for Flash. Flash, we probably need to build up a little more. And morale-wise, the only people, like, yeah. These guys are annoyed, but I'll figure it out. Um, but, yeah, that's the check-in for now. Um, not sure what I'm going to do in June as far as like what actual shows. I think we might actually start building towards crowning some champions since we sort of, well, I mean, we still haven't completely blown off like the mini foods we've been doing, which which is Black Flash Mortal Pile and Kipper versus Maximum. We've sort of blown off one in a way, even though we haven't done another Black Flash Map Pile match. But also we sort of um, like what well, we still need to build, you know, do a big bigger match for the rob edwards and blaze versus kipper and lone rider which i'll have to figure out what to do um but yeah oh yeah and merchandise wise we're up to 40 percent to get level three which is good um but yeah aside from that that's all for now so if you're enjoying this along with everything else including my wcw 2003 series uh mlw streams and my canada streams uh you know either follow me at twitch.tv slash jesse ewok follow the link um, like this video, give some comments below on what you're enjoying and not enjoying, um, or, you know, subscribe to the channel for more fun content. That's all for now, so see you later, and adios.